the Honorable Minister Kubai to lead our first uh, item on the program of the day. Honorable Kubai. Thank you, Program Director, Chairperson of CIFA. Let me acknowledge um, the presence of His Excellency President Cyril Ramaphosa, the President of the Republic, the Minister of Small Business Development, Minister Nchaveni, the Deputy Minister of Department of Tourism, uh, Mr. Fish Mahalena, Mr. Zungu, representing um, who's the President of the BBC, members of the Portfolio Committee on Tourism, led by Chairperson Honorable Masuma Pilu, members of the Select Committee on Trade and Industry, Economic Development, Small Business Development, led by Chairperson Hai, MECs present that are responsible for tourism, social partners at NEDLEC, leaders of USA, Kosatu, civil society, the chairperson of SAT, together with the deputy chairperson and CEO, chairperson of TBCSA, members of the organization of TBCSA who have joined us and other organizations within the tourism space, distinguished business leader, leaders, Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Let me begin by welcoming everybody to the, this important virtual launch of the Tourism Equity Fund and thank everyone for joining us today to mark this critical milestone in the tourism sector. We are gathered here to launch the Tourism Equity Fund, which has been established by the Department of Tourism in partnership with a small enterprise finance agency, which falls under the Department of Small Business Development. The Tourism Equity Fund is a dedicated fund that will provide a combination of debt finance and grant funding to facilitate equity acquisition, as well as new project development in the tourism sector by black entrepreneurs. In this partnership, the fund will, will be managed by CIFA on behalf of the Department of Tourism over the initial three-year period of which after that we will evaluate to improve the fund. During this three-year period, the Department of Tourism will capitalize the fund with an amount of 540 million rands. The funding from the department will be matched with a contribution of 120 million rands from CIFA and 594 million rands from commercial banks that will be participating in this program. This combination will put the value of the Tourism Equity Fund at just over 1.2 billion rands. The tourism sector in South Africa is largely private sector owned and driven, and its contribution to the South African economy has grown tremendously since the 1994 democratic breakthrough. In addition to the beautiful landscape, the long coastal line and the wildlife, South Africa is also endowed with a rich biodiversity and a cultural diversity that makes South Africa one of the world's most sought after tourism destination. This is because this endowments combine to make South Africa a tourism attraction more diverse than other tourist destination in the world. The private sector has done an excellent job in developing and investing in the sector to turn our natural endowment into economic assets for the country. However, much remains to be done to stimulate new investments and to, fulfill, to fully exploit the potential that is still unexplored in our country's tourism sector. The outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic that brought the tourism sector to a grinding halt for most of last year and still continues today has reduced the number and diversity of tourism attractions. Throughout this period, the sector has experienced great difficulties. However, the sector has also shown admirable resilience. In responding to this devastation of the sector by the pandemic, government made a commitment that it will contribute to rejuvenate the supply side of the tourism market. We'll, we believe that to deepen the diversification of the tourism attractions, we also have to pay attention to the diversification and transformation of the sector in terms of ownership and management control. Broadening participation in the tourism sector to South Africans of all race, Races, ages, genders can only enrich the tourism sector to be more competitive and sustainable in the long run. As South Africans, we know and understand that our diversity is our strength 
And it is only when the diversity expresses itself in all spheres of our lives that we will be able to reap its benefit. The journey towards a transformed society is not an easy one. And as we have witnessed in the past 25 years, however, collectively, we should never abandon the task of building a non-racial society in which equitable distribution of resources and opportunity is a fundamental part. In this journey, we must always recall the words of the former president Mbeki when he used the metaphor of a comrade marathon and said, I quote, those who complete the course will do so only because they do not, as fatigue sets in, convince themselves that the road ahead is still too long. The incline's too steep, the loneliness impossible to bear, and the price itself of doubtful value, unquote. It is in this context that we believe the launch of the Tourism Equity Fund is timely and necessary. Through the conceptualization of the fund preceded the pandemic, sorry, though the conceptualization of the fund preceded the pandemic, as it was announced by the president in the 2020 State of the Nation Address, the fund is timely in that it will be instrumental in helping in the recovery and the reconstruction of the sector, which has been devastated by the pandemic. It is necessary because not only will this, help, this fund help us to crowd in private sector investment in the rejuvenation process, but it will also ensure that we are able to see an inclusive sector. It is an message that the fund will seek to achieve the following. Firstly, commercial viable and sustainable majority black owned tourism enterprises with a minimum of 50, 51% black ownership. And this will help us to create jobs, elevate poverty and fight inequality when we promoting the growth of black controlled tourism enterprise. It will de-risk the funding provided by the tourism enterprises um, it will also facilitate the participation of targeted groups such as women and youth in the priority tourism sectors as defined by our triple BE sector codes. I'm also, I'm now also excited to announce that today we are also opening the call for the uh, proposals from entrepreneurs who have projects that need funding. The team is ready to receive proposals and get the program rolling. The details of the requirements and where to send proposal will be published on various media platforms. I would like to thank the Minister of Small Business Development, Minister Mbuzo Nchabeni, and the leadership of CIFA, the board and the executive for Green, to be our partner and working with us to make this fund a reality. Let me also thank the team in the Department of Tourism that worked tirelessly to meet the deadlines in preparation for today's launch. Most importantly, I would like to thank His Excellency the President for not only launching this fund today, but for being the champion and greatest supporter of the tourism sector. His Excellency said, we are really grateful as the tourism sector. And I say here, knowing that members of the sector are following and will be listening to your address as well, our champion today. Today indeed is a great day for the tourism sector, a great day for black businesses and entrepreneurs, a great step forward for transformation and a great day for the South African economy. Welcome everybody to the launch and thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. Um, may I take this opportunity to invite uh, Honorable Minister Nshabeni uh, to make her input. Honorable Minister, over to you. Thank you, Program Director. His Excellency, the State President, Mr. Matameda Cyril Ramaphosa, my colleague, the Minister of Tourism, Honorable Mamuluko Kubai Ngubani, my colleague, the Deputy Minister of Tourism, Comrade Fish Mashalela, the chairpersons of the Portfolio Committees of Small Business uh, Development, Tourism, and the Select Committee of Trade, Industry, Competition, and uh, Tourism, and Small Business Development, uh, the President of the Black Business Council, Mr. Sandile Zungu, distinguished guests and partners from all fraternal uh, organizations. It is our pleasure as the Department of Small Business Development and our agency, the Small Enterprise Financing Agency, popularly known as CIFA, to be launching the Tourism uh, Equity Fund in partnership with the Department of Tourism. 
For us, this is an embodiment of what we have sought to achieve since the start of the sixth administration, which is ensuring that SMME support across government is coordinated. In this regard, I would like to extend our appreciation to my colleague, Honorable Mamuluko Kubayengubani, for her leadership and partnership. As the minister responsible for CIFA, I've committed to her and the department she leads, and I now I'm committing to you, Mr. President, and the nation at large, that and the tourism sector, the SMMEs in the tourism sector in particular, that the improved services that you are starting to experience at CIFA will be extended in the scheme and will strive for continuous improvement with the implementation of this fund. We have committed to position CIFA as a leading government financing support agency for SMMEs in the country, meaning that we go beyond funding responsibilities of CIFA We've positioned CIFA to mobilize and partner with other SMME funders, including commercial banks, as evidence through this tourism equity fund and our other schemes, such as the Spaza Shop Support Fund and also the Fruit and Vegetable Vendor Support Scheme and the many other schemes that we've partnered with other banks. Our goal is to leverage government funds to improve access to other funds by SMMEs and build the necessary security and credit profile for in particular previously disadvantaged SMMEs to access funding, which is critical for the successes of their business. Program director, the tourism equity fund will focus on the following subsectors. The accommodation subsector, which is hotels, lodges, resorts, and self-catering units, including backpacker facilities. The hospitality and related services, which includes conference and convention venues, which are attached to a substantial accommodation element and that are privately owned as uh, attractions in already developed tourism nodes. And we'll also uh, focus on the travel and related sectors, including the tour operators, which are critical to bring tourists into the various destinations, but also into our country. And any other tourism related product or initiative that is not referred to above, but which support tourism development imperatives and economic impact in terms of job creation, geographic spread, and the strengthening of tourism offering of South Africa. What is critical is the nature of the financial support that will be provided, and that support will be provided on the following basis. The funding to acquire controlling equity in entities in the tourism sectors that I have already mentioned, funding of the assets of existing entities in the tourism sector for the explicit purpose of setting up a new entity operating in the sector and also asset financing and working capital that will be required in relation to the acquisition of the tourism entity for expansion or operational purposes. And this is critical during this period where majority of the tourism sector have been facing financial difficulties due to the various restrictions that have been imposed. As already indicated by my colleague, the funding terms are structured in such a way as to make the repayment easy or what we term patient capital, and the terms are as follows. The grant capital injection will be up to a maximum of 20 million rands as determined by the fund scorecard. And the CIFA loan will be accorded to the following terms. Funding up to a maximum of 15 million rands per, up to, uh, per enterprise. The term of the funding will be determined by the business cash flows up to a maximum of 120 months, which is equivalent to 10 years per enterprise with a maximum moratorium of repayment starting after 12 months. The loan will be priced according to CIFA pricing metrics. We also understand the importance of the non-financial component uh, of support in the sector or in any other funding for small businesses. And therefore we've packaged the non-financial support, which includes the following mentorship support, which will be provided to investees that require financial, technical and business support based on the need analysis assessment and market assessment and market access that will be facilitated with various industry partners in order to ensure that entities are sustainable because market access is a major challenge for majority of businesses even when they have access to funding and part of our nine financial support will include assistance with market access. And we are also committing to do investment monitoring and support throughout the journey of this funding package because 
If we don't do that, majority of SMMEs tend to fall by the wayside. It is important to point out this fund is for entities that are 100% owned by South African citizens. And they will apply through a dedicated email address, which is the Tourism Equity Fund at cifa.org.za. Mr. President, sir, this is our first step to the real realization of the vision that you outlined for building an inclusive economy through the Economic Reconstruction and Recovery Program. And we are well on course, Mr. President. In go. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. Uh, Honorable President, I think as we said before, we reassure you, we know that with a partnership as we introduced Mr. Zungu or business and other partners, we should be able to take this program forward to the realization of the outcomes as outlined by both Honorable Minister Kubai and uh, Honorable Nchabeni. Over to you, uh, Honorable, uh, rather Mr. Zungu, the president of BBC. We trust that you are excited as we are uh, with the introduction of this particular scheme. So over to you uh, for your response and your input to, to this exciting uh, event in the history of our country. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. In, in, in my entire life, I've never been called honorable. <laughs> thank you very much. And um, uh, honorable uh, President Ramaphosa, um, His Excellency, uh, honorable ministers uh, in attendance today, and all other esteemed um, ladies and gentlemen, including those that including those that are not visible um, to, 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 to us as a panelist. Um, you know, your attendance here is hugely welcome. Uh, we're not the, the custodians of this event, but uh, we've taken it as our own. Um, as uh, Honorable President, it talks to precisely the issue which has been a bugbear of business, small business in general, and in particular, a black business, the one of access to capital. I was absolutely pleased um, when uh, Minister Chabeni uh, uh, did allude to non-financial support mechanisms and specifically talking about uh, access to market. Um, because it really is the, the, the less spoken of, but uh, the major impediment to the growth of, of business in general. Um, market access includes, among others, if you talk about the, the, the tour guides, uh, being able to service major hotel chains in taking their uh, clients to and from uh, the holiday uh, destinations. Uh, that's market access. So we're very pleased that uh, in your conceptualizing this uh, very important fund, uh, you've gone beyond uh, just the issue of uh, equity uh, or grant and debt to actually saying, yes, once these infrastructures are funded, then where to from here? Market access is very important. Um, Minister uh, uh, Kubayan Gubane, we, we are absolutely pleased um, for, for, for ultimately succeeding. Uh, we remember that um, when um, COVID lockdown started, um, and we were jumping up and down and saying uh, black business need peculiar um, handholding and assistance. Uh, you promised that something was in the offing. Um, and here is a climax of uh, such groundbreaking and behind the scenes work. We truly appreciate that. And um, that sentiment is not just expressed by myself as the president of the Black Business Council. Um, it's broadly uh, shared uh, within the this, this sector of, of black business. Um, and it's, it, it specifically pleases us, uh, Mr. President, that um, these two, um, uh, it's not out of disrespect, but uh, they are young ministers, <laughs> have been particularly um, championing the cause of transformation um, and, uh, and bearing the biggest brand of criticism from all sorts of um, uh, reactionary quarters. That continues 
even with, with the Institute for Racial Race Relations, choosing to redefine uh, the narrative and even redefining the word BEE um, in very uh, unflattering terms, um, that they've been very persistent and um, we truly appreciate it as black business. Um, it, it is not your, uh, your narrow mandate to look after our interests, but uh, the extent to which you have gone out of your way to make sure that uh, black business is not forgotten um, in, during these very difficult times. We see this, this um, tourism um, equity fund as yet another relief measure. Uh, for, for, for business during these difficult times. We see it as a specific relief measure for, uh, for black business in the tourism sector, and, and we truly appreciate it. Um, we have confidence in, um, you know, in, in, in small enterprise um, finance agency as an agency for uh, rolling out um, the, the deployment of these funds. And to the extent possible, uh, we, as a Black Business Council, would like to make ourselves available, Martin, uh, to work with your institution to see how we can improve the efficacy of this. Um, as there are critics of this specific interventions, there would be critics, worse critics, once it's rolled out. And so we have to remain absolutely vigilant in ensuring that the efficacy um, even surpasses that of its best um, friends. Uh, let alone the critics. Uh, so remain very uh, ready to lend a hand. And once again, um, um, Mr. President, um, you have been specifically very keen that um, as we re-stimulate the economy, certain high impact sectors are not forgotten. Uh, tourism undoubtedly is one of those sectors which has got uh, a great elasticity in terms of labor absorption and even the issue of skills um, in attracting those with the minimum skills uh, who can then provide for their families and uh, who can then upscale human capital in this country. Um, it is therefore specifically appreciated by us at Black Business Council that um, the tourism um, you know, uh, equity fund has been one of the foremost and one of the first out of the starting blocks to demonstrate that this economic stimulus is a reality. And with those few words, I wish this launch great success and I wish um, the success to the fund uh, beyond this point. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Zungo. Should I say Sandy? Um, <laughs> Continue with honorable, please. Send back my, my points for calling you honorable, but I think you're honorable none the way. Uh, you don't need to be a politician for you to be honorable. It's in your days that we, we accord you that, 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 uh, the, the, the title of being honorable. Uh, just I think one thing that you raised very key without summarizing what you said, we know um, that all African languages are rich in idioms. And there's one idiom that comes to my mind that cuts across all of them, that where there's no criticism, there's no work that is happening. So we do know that it's only when we're working hard and when we are pushing the frontiers that criticism will come our way. So we acknowledge that very well. Thank you very much for, for the gesture. Uh, the invitation you made to CIFA will be responding as per your invitation to see how best we can assist to make sure that our people do get the service that we trusted to deliver. I wouldn't want to waste more time. Your Excellency, Honorable President, uh, I would like to hand over to yourself to, to deliver the keynote address. Thank you very much. Well, Program Director, Martin Mahosi, and Minister, of tourism, Ms. Mamuloko Kubai Ngubani, Minister of Small Business Development, Ms. Kumbuzo Nchaveni, and Deputy Minister of Tourism, Mr. Fish Mashalela, and the Chair of the Board of SA Tourism, Mr. Siabonga Dube, and the CEO of South African Tourism, 
Mr. Cesar Sinsanchona. I'd also like to greet the CEO of the Small Enterprise Finance Agency, Mr. Mpoli Simachamba, and directors of CIFA who are here. It's wonderful to have you here, business and industry representatives. But I also want to greet uh, Mr. The Honorable uh, President of uh, BBC, who does not want to be regarded as being honorable, but leave that to us. We will call you honorable and uh, just, just ignore us as we call you honorable. There are reasons why we say so. <laughs> Mr. Zungu, uh, Mr. Njali Njali, uh, the General Secretary of COSATU, and uh, Mr. Kovadia, and uh, business and industry representatives and representatives of provincial tourism associations, and everyone else who is here. It is my real distinct honor and privilege to have this opportunity to address the virtual launch of this groundbreaking venture, a tourism equity fund that will speed up transformation in one of the most crucial sectors of our economy. Now, this is recovery, transformation in action. This launch is taking place when the tourism industry is admittedly facing severe challenges. The COVID-19 pandemic has disrupted economic activity just right across the economy. But the nature of the pandemic, together with restrictions to protect public health, has dramatically impacted the tourism industry quite negatively. From the smallest B&B &B to major hotel chains, from local tour companies to airlines, many establishments have had to contend with cancellations of their bookings or deferred travel. It is important to remember that in all of this, and sometimes we may think that we are alone, it's important to remember that we are not alone. The pandemic has had a profound impact on the tourism sector globally. Nearly every country in the world has been affected. The World Tourism Travel and Tourism Council 2020 Recovery Scenarios project that global travel and tourism will have experienced losses of over $2 billion in the best case scenario and as much as $5.5 billion in a worst case scenario. Now that is serious money. When you convert that into our local currency, the rand, you're talking about a whooping amount of money. As though that was not enough. Many jobs in the tourism and associated sectors in the value chain have been lost and have had to be shared. Countries like ours, which rely heavily on the income generated by tourism and other associated activities have suffered immensely. As damaging as this pandemic has been and continues to be, we can be certain that as infections are brought under control and more areas of economic activity resume, there will be a gradual recovery. That is bound to happen as it has always happened throughout history. So a recovery will happen, but I guess everybody will say, but when is it going to happen? The task before us now is to ensure that we do not simply return to business as usual, but that 
we focus on accelerating the pace towards achieving our transformation goals. Tourism directly accounts for 2.9 thereabouts of South Africa's GDP. And they also account for 8.6% indirectly. Now, this industry supports about one and a half million direct and, in, and indirect jobs. But this is not nearly enough. South Africa's tourism, ba tourism base is significant. And we are one of the world's most popular long haul destinations. Given South Africa's many draw cards, not least of all our spectacular natural attractions, our beautiful landscape, these figures should be and must be higher than what is said to be the case right now. This is a sector that is in the main labor intensive and therefore has immense job creation potential. It supports a vibrant and complex value chain. It generates foreign direct investment and significant export earnings for our country. It stimulates and supports the development of small businesses. Overall, the tourism sector is among those with the greatest potential for long-term sustainable economic growth. It is also one of the economic segments that can play a pivotal role in the transforming or transformation of the economy and uh, contributing to changing patterns of both ownership, management, as well as control. If the tourism industry is to play its role in aiding the economic recovery in the wake of COVID-19, it must grow and transform. So this effort that we are all about today is going to contribute to this sector growing, but at the same time, it must transform. The industry has responded to COVID-19 with a tourism recovery plan. And it entails three segment uh, strategic uh, themes. Firstly, it's about reigniting demand. Secondly, it's rejuvenating supply. And thirdly, strengthening enabling capability. Now, the tourism sector is resilient and can rebound from periods of crises. And we've seen this industry doing precisely that. It is dynamic, it is, it is robust. That is why growing and developing as well as transforming tourism is one of the priorities of the Economic Reconstruction and Recovery Plan that I announced late last year. One of the immediate measures identified in the plan that we announced to protect the supply side capacity of tourism sector is transformation via a tourism equity fund. This that we are about today. A fund that facilitates the participation of black entrants, but also more importantly, facilitate the entrance of women enterprises and persons with disabilities. This fund is aligned with the National Tourism Sector Strategy 2016 to 2026, which um, has placed significant emphasis on a transformative and inclusive tourism economy. And we are very pleased about the area of focus it has placed. One of the five pillars of this strategy addresses the issue of broad-based benefits in the tourism sector. In specifically, also it focuses on transformation but also on rural and township tourism development 
Now, these are areas that have always been neglected, that have always been ignored, and that have always been pushed to the periphery. And people at times did not even know that these areas existed. Now their time has come. The Tourism Equity Fund is informed by the recognition that the capital intensive nature of the industry prevents many black owned tourism enterprises from growing as well as developing by providing access to finance for black owned commercially viable tourism projects. The Tourism Equity Fund intends to address this challenge. As a combination of grant funding, concessionary loans and debt finance, the fund will cater to the specific needs of black owned businesses to acquire equity, to invest in new developments or expand existing developments. Now, a vital element of the operation of the Tourism Equity Fund is the involvement of commercial banks, which will ensure that participants are able to access further loan financing. This will significantly increase, it will increase exponentially the impact and reach of this initiative. And it will also increase the level of private investment in the industry. This partnership between government, public entities, and the commercial banks is a great example of the kind of collaboration that is required as we forge a path towards a sustainable economic recovery. We are committed to ensuring that this fund enables black business to substantially benefit from the tourism economy not to be roped in by fronting companies or to be marginal bystanders and small scale suppliers to supply various uh, larger uh, tourism enterprises. Whether it is in a coastal town in the Eastern Cape or a wildlife rich area in the Northwest or Limpopo, it is our aim through this fund to actively support black owned businesses to run profitable, but more importantly, sustainable enterprises. It is also our aim to employ local people to procure goods and services locally and to make a real contribution to our economy. This is an opportunity for us to build back differently and better. I am confident that the Tourism Equity Fund will play a vital, most vital role in general. But I'd like to take this opportunity to congratulate the Department of Tourism and the Department of Small Business Development and our own industry partners for all the work they have been doing behind the scenes to make this day a reality. Many of us have looked forward to this day and we are delighted that this day is here now. And let me conclude, ladies and gentlemen, by making a call on all qualifying enterprises who want to be part of the recovery and transformation of this vital industry to apply to the fund starting from today. As they say in the classics, it is the earliest bird that will catch the fattest worm. So I say apply early because the funding is quite limited. Of course, we wanted a much bigger fund, but there are limits to which we can go. But the contribution that this fund is going to make for those who are going to take up the opportunities and run quickly through the gate, they are going to find that 
the assistance, the partnership is most meaningful. So I invite all those who qualify to rush ahead and uh, make their application. So I'd like to thank everyone. Tourism is so important in the life of our economy. And uh, by doing this, we will be ready as tourism comes back on its own. Let me actually end by saying, tourism will come back as it has always come back in the past. It will continue to contribute in an immense way to the economy of our country. And let us all work together to make sure that indeed it does come back to fulfill our expectations. So I thank you and thank you very much for inviting me to be part of this. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Pre Your Excellency, uh, President Ramaphosa. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to hand over right away to Honorable Mashalela, the Deputy Minister of uh, Tourism, to um, close the, the ceremony for us. Thank you very much. Let me take this opportunity to thank you, the Program Director, <coughs> a Chairperson of CIFA, Mr. Mahosi. Uh, let me acknowledge His Excellency, the President of South Africa, Sir Ramaphosa, Minister of Tourism, Mamluko Gupai Ngubane, Minister of Small Business Development, Kumbuzo Chalemi, the members of the Portfolio Committee and Select Committee led by Mahoma Pilo and Kai, respectively, MSCs present, social partners at NetLeg, USA, Labor, Civil Society, the President of BBC, uh, Mr. Sandy Lozunga, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Let me take this opportunity on behalf of the Department of Tourism and the entire tourism family who are in this platform to extend our hearty vote of thanks to the President for being part of this historic occasion, the launch of the Tourism Equity Fund. Mr. President, Today's launch is a fulfillment of the promise you made to the nation during SONA when you said, and I quote, we are launching a tourism equity fund this year to stimulate transformation. The launch of this tourism equity fund today will go a long way in meeting the developmental agenda of our country which is guided by the principle of empowerment, inclusivity, and transformation with a view of advancing economic opportunities for all, including people, including those that are living in the townships, villages, and small towns. The COVID-19 pandemic has taught us that we cannot control what happened but we can control how we respond to what is happening around us. Though the pandemic continues unabated, it is important for us to remain committed to recovery of the industry and to preserve the tourism value chain through our targeted response, relief, and recovery efforts in line with the government's reconstruction and recovery. The gravity of the situation calls for all stakeholders to work together with us as government, with our development finance institutions, to offer seamless packages of assistance and financing to those entering the sector as part of our recovery. Today's launch is our clear demonstrations of government's commitment in changing the ownership patterns, management and controls of the tourism industry 
in favor of women, youth, and people with disability. Transformation is integral to growth of the sector and by providing access to finance for Black-owned commercial viable tourism projects. The TF addresses one of the major challenges to the transformation of the tourism sector. Tourism sector will never be the same again, but what emerges depend on us. As you said, Mr. President, in one of your addresses that, and I quote, we have to decisively change the face of our economy to where it was before the pandemic. In other words, our tasks are not only to build better, but also to build forward differently. Close quote. As we rejuvenate this industry, we embrace our new normal with the same determination and commitment to dismantle the inequalities of the old, shoulder to shoulder and hand in hand. Let me conclude, Program Director, by inviting all the stakeholders on behalf of the Minister to work together with us in ensuring that we collectively create a transformed, inclusive tourism economy. The HEX, the sector has been on a mark, on a mark time for too long. We now need radical change and movement forward. On behalf of the President, the Ministers of Tourism and Small Business Development and the country as a whole would like to thank all of you for your participation and thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, our colleagues from the media, we've come to the end of uh, our launch. Thank you very much. Uh, all right, that is the Tourism Equity Fund uh, launch. We heard from President Cyril Ramaphosa giving uh, the keynote uh, address there. And of course, uh, that uh, news just in that we got is that 1.2 billion will be made uh, available to uh, that fund. And the president saying that uh, those businesses that do qualify, those wanting to benefit from the fund, can start to apply for that fund uh, starting from uh, today. And the president uh, saying quite aptly, early, the early bird catches uh, the fattest worm. And uh, real positivity from the Minister of Tourism and uh, the President as well as the Minister of Small Business Development that uh, recovery will indeed happen in the tourism industry which has certainly uh, taken a knock as was emphasized. All right let's take a short break. After the break we go back to the State Capture Commission uh, for more on that so do stay on.